everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to attempt to dip dye some 100% cotton yarn into some Tulip One Step Tie Dye that I mixed earlier today, within the hour even. I have played around with some heat-based techniques using the Tulip One Step Tie-Dye uh, in the past. I have a whole playlist where I use Tulip Tie-Dye to dye yarn. I'll have that linked in the video description. But I don't think I've specifically tried dip dyeing the yarn into this type of dye. One of the perks of this dye is that you don't need to pre-soak your shirts or your yarn in soda ash. That is present in here. But what I don't know is if we dilute it into some water, if, you know, maybe it's just not going to work. I don't know. And we won't know until we try it. I have about half of a bottle of a green and half of a bottle of blue. Again, I mixed these earlier today. I'm not 100% sure what the color names are, but they came um, from a combination of the five bottle Shibori set and or the five bottle mermaid set. For the yarn today, we are going to use some white lily sugar and cream yarn. This is 100% cotton. I find it's super, super absorbent. And there are 113 grams in the skein. In my dedicated dye pot, I filled it about between a third and a halfway full of water. This is an eight quart pot. So yeah, I didn't measure the amount of water that I put in. The plan is to bring this up to a boil and then have the yarn like ready to go over my arm, add the dye, and then we will add the yarn and, well, start dip dyeing. It is possible that the heat, with the addition of heat, some of this color won't be uh, very active anymore. Um, the problem with fiber reactive dyes and tie dye is that you can't store it in water because it will become less effective and pigmented over time. The dyes do react with water and so then they will just rinse away. But if this works, it's another really, really fun way to dye cotton yarn. Okay, we are boiling. I am going to reduce the heat to low. I squeezed out most of the water from our yarn. I am dumping in the dye, carefully setting those aside wiping off my hands and now we are going to start dipping. Uh, I did add one of my favorite reusable nylon zip ties to one end of our cotton yarn and I did that because um, it acts as an extra tie. It'll make it so that way I can easily hold on if I dip the whole thing into the pot at one point, which I'm sort of inclined to do. Um, I mean, I'm going pretty fast and I should slow it down, but I'm not, I'm honestly not sure how fast colors might strike um, or how fast colors could uh, like be inactive. So, just squeezing it, uh, we've got, it's a little blown out on camera, but we've got just like a hint of color up there. It's unclear to me if this is going to make much of a difference. And we might have a resist where I had that tie tied. Uh, I'm not going to worry a ton. At the very least, we'll probably end up with some kettle dyed, uh, semi-solid type yarn. But I figure that, you know, I want some color at the other end. <laughs> oh man, maybe it would be good to do this with having, um, some wool yarn on hand to use as like a mop to soak up some of that color. But if I, again, if I squeeze that end, the color in here is very pastel. Let's see, well, maybe I'll leave it like this and let that middle cool off for like a good 30 seconds and I can try squeezing to see if the color in there 
feels like it's more pigmented there towards the middle. I mean, it's hard, it's hard for me to say for sure. I am just doing that so I can wipe my hands. I figured this is a long time scale project. One where, to be honest, I probably could have done this as like a step function where I added just the tip in and then slowly added more and more and more yarn to the pot. Every once in a while, going in. <laughs> you can see that, I mean, there is a ton of pigment in that pot, but with tie-dye, there typically is a ton of pigment um, until then there's not. Usually there's a lot of pigment and you need things to be extra pigmented so that way when you rinse it, some color remains behind. So yeah, we will see. But again, like I'm not expecting to see uh, any of this color in here. I'm not expecting to see the color exhaust. But you know what I'm going to do? I think that I am going to set this aside for um, a minute or two, long enough for me to go get a skein of Stroll fingering weight yarn, pre-wet it, um, so that way we can add that to the pot too, just to show how we are sort of leaving the other bit out of the pot. Not even a full minute later, I went and I pre-wet some Knit Picks Stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn base, and I use it all the time. If you'd like to learn more about it or any of the other yarn bases I'm using, uh, you can find affiliate links in the video description. Tie-dye is much, much more vibrant on cotton yarn than it is on a wool yarn. Um, that is the absolute reality of it. But this this wool yarn in here today is in here not as a mop entirely, but just a control. Um, is you know will we see a saturated pigment or will it be a pastel after the amount of time that we have left it in the pot? So that I don't know. Um, clearly we could go and add the whole yarn to the pot. In the past, I've tried some more like space dyeing and then it looks like the color spreads and we might get something solid, but then a lot of that color rinses away because with the um, presence of the heat, there's less dye available to strike to the yarn. So I'm honestly, honestly not sure, um, but I mean, if we get anywhere close to this color, it would be awesome. And I don't know if you noticed, but when you put it in, it is a deep, a deep teal. And as soon as I lift it up, um, I do see some tonal variation, but pretty quickly it is getting a lot paler. And that's because some of that liquid is draining out and down. Um, and so that is something that we're going to need to keep in mind. But I keep dipping. Let's see the color difference between the end that has been in the longest and our pastel end. There is a difference. Oh, it's subtle. Oh, it's subtle. I tried dip dyeing with Rit once, but I think back then I still used way too much of the Rit dye. Um, these days I know to use less, so I'm not sure. Like part of me wants to add this yarn in entirely, but I'm afraid if I do that we're really going to end up with all one color. So sort of a tough situation, but at first glance, um, I'm not I mean, right now, I'm not sure. 
Um, this might be more effort than it's worth. It might be better to try to hand paint uh, cereal dilutions onto the skein, uh, like I did in a previous video. Um, and although you could definitely go more extreme with those color differences, if you do those dilutions, then you could get something saturated to much less saturated. But yeah, it's hard hard to say, but we do have, okay, I definitely don't want that other end going in, and how hot, okay, the heat's on low, I think I am going to, even if there is going to be a line of demarcation, I think I want to leave this with part of the yarn in, and part, maybe about half of the skein out, for uh, 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and check on the yarn. Okay, 10 minutes are up. I am going to go a bit lower, add, you know, some more of the cotton in. Um, I've got just, you know, maybe two thirds of the cotton yarn are now in the pot, and I guess I'll just quickly, like, move it. But, yeah, we'll sit here. The heat is still on low. We'll sit here for another 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 more minutes, and honestly, like, I'm not sure if I see a big difference. <laughs> uh, it's hard to say. Oh my gosh. Um, let's pull up the funny that our superwash yarn feels deeper. Am I squeezing it out? We're definitely getting pigment in here. Um, there's definitely, definitely pigment. Interesting. Okay, so I think, oh gosh, you guys, I don't know. I don't know. This is like so different. Like if I'm dip dyeing with acid dyes, like it's, you know, five minutes max. And we've been doing this for a while. I. Okay, I'm going to have just that little tip in and sort of position the rest over the edge of the pot. Um, so just the tip and I'm going to leave this I think for 20 more minutes and then I'll call it. Now that the 20 minutes are up, I am going to turn off the heat. And I'm first going to remove the stroll, let some of that water drain. Okay, have that down at one end. And then um, I'm doing my best to have the cotton drain. Um, I want to put the, quote, most pigmented end sort of on top of the wool and put the rest towards the other side. I'm going to set it aside. Okay, I have it set up like this with the pale side sort of on the lip of the pan so everything can cool. This will hopefully preserve some or any of the gradient if we got it. Finally, I'm gonna take one last skein of dry stroll and dunk it in the pot. I am curious if there's any pigment left in here and if that is doing, gonna do anything at all. Okay, so you put it in, the, I'm gonna put it in the pot and I'm gonna leave it in here for a couple of hours. People often ask if what's rinsed out can dye yarn and well, we'll see what if any pigment remains in here and hopefully the yarn doesn't get too tangled. It is now the moment of truth. We are gonna start washing the dip dyed cotton, which I swear there is a difference between the palest and deepest, but you can see already, this is a situation where we are gonna have significant bleeding because that is what happens with tie dye. So let's squeeze this all out and see if we see anything. And I don't know. It's very subtle, very, very subtle. And we're gonna have to do many, many rinses. I'm gonna add some dish soap to help. And yeah, we are gonna wash this a lot. I was half hoping for something fairly dramatic. Sometimes when you first add it to the water, then maybe we would see that there is 
like significantly less color up here than down here, which, I mean, there kind of is, but I guess like it could have been more extreme. After the first two rinses, I'm okay taking my gloves off. Uh, initially, you know, I try to avoid seeing my hands, but what's left at this stage shouldn't. But now comes a lot of rinsing. But preliminary results suggest that the effect that we got is relatively subtle. And if you want a dip dyed effect, it's more, it would be more worth diluting the dyes and hand painting it, followed by steam setting or letting it sit for a couple of days. But anyway, I am going to keep washing this. And then you can even go to hot water because I mean, it is cotton, it can handle it. Uh, but then after I've got the water as clear as I can, I'll put it through the spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Once I get to about this level, that is where I call it. There's maybe a smidge of color in there, but the brightly colored bleeding has stopped. As for the dip dyed, I mean, we did dip dye it. We do have a few tones. It's just a little subtler than I would have liked. Now we have our two skeins of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. One of them that heated in the pot for goodness, probably at least 40 minutes. And then the other that has sat in the pot for at least eight hours. Um, I put it in after the heat was off, so it did start off warm, but I am curious to see the color difference between the two. Right away, this one looks more pigmented, the one that had the heat. But I mean, we haven't evaluated this second one yet, so let's go wash it. But as you can see, our pot is still extremely pigmented. Lots and lots of color there. Okay, let's first put in the one that we heat set. And now our secondary one. Just because I'm curious how much pigment this second one might have. And how potentially tangled <laughs> this one is. Uh... I'm going to quickly attempt to arrange the second one. If that does not happen easily, then I recommend waiting until the yarn is dry. But uh, I think that I can at least have a fairly quick handle on it, so that is good. And then our other skein has the zip tie around it. So the question I, this is a question I often get because I mean, look at this rinse water. It, the amount of pigmentation in here is fairly extreme. This time, and you know what? Since we know that the other one is gonna be paler, I'm gonna add it to the zip tie and just keep things somewhat together. Now, one reason why I did not add any vinegar to our pot for the wool yarn is that I don't really ever add vinegar when I'm dyeing wool base yarns with the tie-dye kits. One of the original one-step tool tie-dye kits I had many years ago indicated that it could be used for wool and silk. Uh, more recently, that's not part of the instructions, but, <laughs> you know, so I figured it's worth giving a shot, and you can get lovely, lovely colors. It's not my first choice for wool, but it works. And honestly, I'm fairly impressed by the amount of pigmentation that was still left after all that time. I'm adding some dish soap. Uh, there, you know, is not, I was expecting the second one to be really pastel, and it's paler. They're not nearly as pastel as I had expected. But the downside to this, and it really is any fiber reactive dye, it's just so much washing. Now, some higher end commercial dyes that you buy and you would use your own soda ash or vinegar, those are much higher quality into a tie-dye which is sort of just available to the masses in a ready-to-go kit. It is very user-friendly, which is why 
I like it, but uh, it is a lot more expensive than getting a jar of a fiber reactive dye from, say, Dharma Trading Company. So that is something to keep in mind as well. Hmm. Now, if you've been watching Chemnitz videos for a while, you would know that my least favorite part about my job is the washing stage. <laughs> this is my least favorite part to film, but I feel like it's important to show because you know, it's the reality of the project and I don't want to just gloss over it because sometimes when I have some troubleshooting to do, I think that's important to be able to show and share that stuff with all of you. But anyway, I'm going to keep washing this until the water runs clear, sticking with cool tap water, and then the yarn will go through the spin dryer and hang up to dry. We technically have a dip dyed colorway here. Uh, the one end is significantly paler than the other, but it's so subtle, so, so, so subtle that, again, I think it would be more worth to do some harsh serial dilutions and hand paint it uh, to maybe actually get to see some pigmentation difference. I do want to try more dip dyeing with cotton yarn. Uh, the original one that I did with Brit, I think I had way too much pigment in there as well. So. Yeah, I, I want to try and keep exploring. If you have any tips on dip dyeing cotton yarn or any dye types I should try, please leave a comment down below. We added two wool-based colorways into the pot, and honestly, I'm surprised by a few things. One is the level of pigmentation. Uh, this yarn right here, it is Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. It is significantly more pigmented than our cotton. Significantly. Also, the hue difference is staggering. Uh, I definitely was dyeing this one first before I added in the wool, so I just don't know. Uh, the difference between a sky blue and this beautiful teal, I just really don't know. The other thing that surprised me is after things had heated for a long period of time, uh, it seemed like the color wasn't doing much to the cotton anymore. We still got some pigment on the wall, and I bet if I added a third skein, maybe we would have seen pigment there as well. One hypothesis, and based on a few things I've read, is I think that the color that we get on cotton is somewhat concentration dependent, potentially. And so by diluting it, and then maybe it wasn't as basic, I don't know, I bet maybe if the dye was more concentrated, we could have had better results. I'm, I don't know, I'm not sure. It's just, just a thought. But yeah, I guess there is just so much pigment left that maybe you can actually dye something in what you rinse your tie-dye t-shirts with. Now granted, we didn't try this, that water, like 24 hours later or anything like that, but huh, this is definitely food for thought. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you appreciate my willingness to try things for the very first time on camera, even when I don't know what the results are going to be, and still share things if the results are a little underwhelming. <laughs> Please subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on so you never miss a new video. If you'd like to help support the channel, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. That is where almost all the yarn that I dye in these videos ends up. And so it's a great win-win-win. You can buy some beautiful hand-dyed yarn and support the content here on the channel at the same time. I don't think I would call the results in this video particularly underwhelming because I think that we did absolutely learn something. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to want to try this exact technique again in the future. But we really wouldn't know unless we had tried, and so therefore I'm really, really glad that I tried. <laughs> My journey into fiber reactive dyes is still at the very early stages, and so there's so much that I don't know and I'm really excited to continue to explore and learn and, well, get additional colors of some fiber reactive dyes. <laughs> Summer is coming up, and with that, I definitely want to do a lot of tie-dyeing. I even picked up some, uh, let's just say interesting kids kind of tie-dye 
uh, tools, equipment, hacks? I don't know. I have some things that I want to try, both on shirts and yarn, and so I'm really, really excited for it to be warm outside so that way I can get super, super messy. <laughs> and bring the kids in on the fun. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.